Hey, welcome back to Creative to Grave R. My name is Mark Gingrass. Today, we're going to talk about how to separate things like first and last name that might be in one column. We'll separate it out to be into two columns. And we're going to do this using the tidy methods. So we're going to use the tidyverse. So if you don't have the tidyverse, again, packages install tidyverse. Library, let's load this thing up, tidyverse, and let's create a quick tibble, which we're going to get used to using instead of data frames. So we're going to call this, uh, I don't know, people, people, and we're going to create a tribble. We're going to create a tibble using the tribble function. So tribble. And again, if you didn't, if you don't know what a tribble is, check out my previous video. A tribble is basically just a, a different way to initiate a tibble. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of things here. Actually, we're only going to create one. We're going to call it name. That's it. Comma. Now our data. And remember the tilde notation that tells it, hey, that's the name of the feature or the column or the variable. You're going you're to hear all of those names. So the name is Mark Gingrass, and another name would be Dave Smith, and another name would be Jackie Doe. I know I've mixed these names up all the time, but we do have some sort of pattern here. Uh, what you'll notice is that there's a space between the first and last names. Let's go ahead and do control enter or command enter on that. I have some previous data here, ignore the uh, grades. Let's click on people. And now you see it's a single column spreadsheet, we can call it, it's, a, it's actually a tibble, but it looks like a data frame or a spreadsheet. So under the name column, we have all of our names. Cool, but you know what? We wanted them separated. We wanted first and last name. So how can we do that using the tidy methods? Let's go ahead and play around with that. And this is actually very short and simple, sweet, to the point. We take our people data set, right? Our, our data frame, our tibble, whatever you want to call it, and we pipe it into a function. So control shift M or command shift M will give you that pipe operator. And if you don't use that, uh, you can actually single-handedly type out percent greater than percent. So what it's going to do, it's going to take the data that's in people and pipe it as if it's going through a pipe. Imagine a pipe and, and you can add filters, you can do things to it, but things as you go towards the right, it'll do to that data set. So what we wanna do is I'm gonna hit enter because white space doesn't matter. And typically with every pipe operator, you'd put it on a new line just to be aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna use a separate function. So it's just called separate, simple enough. And what do we wanna separate? We wanna separate the name. So the name is, na is just name, because that's the name of our feature or our variable, the name right here. We wanna separate name into what? What do we wanna separate that into? Well, we say into equals, and it self-populates as, as much as it can, equals, and then we'll just do a vector, a column vector, I call it, but a vector, uh, we want to say, hey, we want to call that first capitalized and last. Simple as that. And that's it. That's it. Control enter on that. And now you see at the bottom, you will see because it's a tibble and not a data frame, it actually tells you it's a character string and a character string, but you also have first and last. And we don't even have the name anymore as part of this. Now this works with anything though. So now let's let's check it out. We didn't save that though. We piped it into the separate function. It did it and it displayed it. It printed what we have. Let's save that as uh, people two. So we'll just call it. In fact, let me show you this that you can do this. You can actually use the the notation dash greater than and save it as people to this way if you prefer command enter if you look over here on the right people to shows up and it's got first and last name as simple as that now the separator happened to be a space automatically because uh, that's just the default behavior of separate if i wanted to i could put a comma in here and then it might give me sep okay sep equals and then you can plug in a space there and it'll do the same thing, command enter. You should have the exact same result for people too because we saved it there, boom, there it is. Um, if you wanted to put separator equals uh, something different, you won't get what we just have. So let's try that, command enter. It's warning message already, I don't even know. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't work, it doesn't work because there, are, there aren't any, any any forward slashes, right? But if I did change this to a forward slash, let's just do one of them. Just notice the nuances of this. So I'll rerun the people data set up here, then I'll rerun it here. Still get errors, but at least 
well, warnings, I'm sorry, but at least it did do the last one because it was in the proper format. So there's limitations. It's not every symbol, every symbol that it can do. It, it just, it, if it has a pattern, you can easily separate it. Now, patterns can get more complicated and tricky than that, and you can have multiple separators, I'm sure. Now, we did save this as people too. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this back to a space bar or a space right here, and let's make our separator a space explicitly. I say explicitly is because we're overriding the default, which the default, it would still work. It looks for the first symbol, and if that symbol is a separator, it'll work, but just to be more explicit, we're gonna say, hey, that separator is a space, and I could put it as a vector, like C, I believe that should work. Let's try it one more time. Uh, rerun people and rerun people again. Let's just double check that it worked for all, and it did. Simple as that, very, but, Here's the thing, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and save this the traditional way. So instead of people two like this, I'm gonna go ahead and put it at the very beginning because that's, that's how I usually see it. And I think that people are just used to that. Now the pipe operator has a right arrow, so it could be confusing because you can pipe this into multiple things. Let me just give you an example of that. Uh, again, I'll rerun everything. In fact, I'll delete everything just so it's gone. You can see that I'm starting fresh. Control A, Control Enter. Control A, Control A, Control Enter. Boom, everything's there. Now, what I could do is I could pipe this into another thing. Let's say I wanted to view it immediately. I can just say pipe, Control Shift M, into the view, right? So now if I do, well, actually, never mind. That will not work because I'm storing it into people too. If I didn't store it, it would work. But I can still pipe this into certain things. Like if I want to pipe this into and say, give me the first three rows, I could say head. Uh, well, the first, the, let me just get the first row, head one. Now, if I do that, people two will actually only be one observation, right? So it's only taking the first one. I can pipe it into tail one. It'll give me the last one. You know, it gets very, the pipe operator is nice. So there's Jackie, there's the last one. If you find this useful, uh, click some of the links that pop up at the end of this video and you'll see some more about the tidyverse.